In today's video, I'm going to explain what I used to look for when I was adjudicating claims for active duty service members, going through the BDD claims process, and veterans. So make sure you stick around. Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Dwayne Kimball, owner and founder of KMD89 VA Claims Consulting, United States Army veteran and retired VA rating specialist. Today's video, I'm going to share some things that I would look for when I was adjudicating claims for active duty service members and veterans. But as always, before we get into today's video, make sure you go out and pick up my new book, VA Claim Success. It's a bestseller out there on Amazon, but if you want a signed copy, make sure you go to my website and I will send you a signed copy. So today's video, as a former VA Raider, I adjudicated hundreds of claims to include active duty service members and veterans. So if you're an active duty service member, I know what that process looks like and it was trained by the VA, all right? Now, when either the veteran or active duty service member submitted that claim, the first thing that I'm looking for is that VA form 21-526EZ. Now, if it was a veteran, that could be a VA form 20-0995 or a 2680 for aid in attendance. Now, those last two forms wouldn't be for active duty service members, all right? But I will look for those particular forms. I will review them to see exactly what they're claiming. I would go through the claim. If you said I'm claiming knee condition, shoulder condition, and PTSD, I'm deferring that claim back because I need to know which knee, which shoulder, okay? So you gotta make sure you spell it out. Right knee, left knee, right shoulder, left shoulder, all right? So let's just say the veteran's clear, right knee, left shoulder, PTSD, all right? Next thing I'm doing if it's an active duty service member, they're not going to have a DD-214, but veterans do. So I got to look for that character of discharge for the veterans, okay? And then I'm going through their medical records for active duty in both scenarios for active duty and a veteran. Is it documented? Now, let's just say the veteran's right knee is not documented, but on that DD-214, they have a parachute badge or the active duty member has submitted a certificate for parachute school, jump school, right? I can request the exam. So I'm looking for the claim form. Is it completed correctly? Is the information that they're claiming, that the information that's on those claim forms, is it clear? So if they don't have a DBQ and nexus statement, boom, I'm submitting a 2507 medical request for a CMP exam, all right? Also, I'm looking at any additional evidence that they may have submitted with that particular claim. All right. So if it's deemed necessary to go out for a CMP exam, then they get a CMP exam if they meet the criteria. Now, let's just say I'm adjudicating a claim. This is for veterans, not active duty, but for veterans. And that veteran submits a sufficient DBQ and nexus statement. And I know what makes it sufficient because guess what? I was trained by the VA, all right? So if it was sufficient for rating purposes, I'm adjudicating that, I'm adjudicating that claim right off the spot, right on the spot, I'm sorry. Right on the spot, I'm adjudicating that claim. There's no CMP exam needed. But what we're seeing now, because guess what? In my last video when I talked about Ripping the Band-Aid off, you're in a dog fight. Raiders are not doing that now. You get a sufficient CMP exam, they're scheduling an exam. They're going right ahead. They're just not even looking at it. Like, it never happened. Now, active duty service members, I've been getting a lot of people call me and say, hey, do I have to go out and get all these DBQs? No, you do not. But what you need to do is go through your medical records, get a copy of those medical records, and go through them and see what you were treated for. Okay, and you can file 
that 21 dash 526 EZ on that 180th day. Okay, so now I've got the claim. I've looked at it, looked at what the veteran was claiming, looked at all uh, the additional evidence, made the decision. Do they need do they need a CMP exam? If they don't, what else needs to be done? Is there any other development? No. All right. Now, exams come back, and this is for active duty and veterans. The exam comes back, but my last few years at the VA, opposed to the first few years, I was getting claims that I didn't request the exam for. Same way with the BDD claims for active duty service members. So I had to go through that initial process I just explained to make sure that the previous adjudicator did it, to, did it correctly. All right. Now, the exam comes back in either situation. Look at what the veteran's claiming. Yep. And I'm documenting this on a Word document that I created for myself. OK, so now I'm looking veteran claims this. Is an increase for this? Is they claim it's secondary? Was the correct exam done? Looking at a BDD claim, yep, veterans got an exam for this, 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 this. Now let me go back and look at that separation exam for those BDD claims. Here's a hint. If all those conditions that veteran claim was on the separation exam, a retirement exam, I don't need to go back through the uh, I don't need to go back to the remainder of those STRs. All I'm looking for, yep, found it. The examiner gave a diagnosis, service connection. The veteran that's no longer on active duty, exam comes back. Now I got to make sure that exam is insufficient in either case, right? Comes back, sufficient, positive opinion, it's a grant. Now, if it was a denial and that exam was insufficient, I got to send it back for an addendum. Okay? And then sometimes that veteran would send in a DBQ in the meantime. You can do that. So if I had a negative opinion from that CMP doctor and the veteran sent in that DBQ and nexus statement, that was a positive opinion and it was sufficient. Guess what? Probative weight is going to that private doctor as long as they look, had a look at your VA claims folder. Okay. So it's got, it, you know, it several things that I looked at, but I always look for a way to make sure I could grant that particular benefit. Now, a lot of the times the veteran or the active duty service member did the work for me. Yes, they did the work for me. Surprisingly, as it may sound, they submitted the correct things. They didn't go overboard. They didn't submit 10,000 pages of stuff to make me flip through it like I'm looking for a needle in a haystack. They made sure that all the boxes were checked on the uh, uh, claims form, whether it was a 526EZ or 0995. Because if that claim form is not completed or is missing some, missing some information, you go to the end of the line. Because now we got to send it back and ask you to complete that information. It's an incomplete claim form. But they made sure it was complete. Active duty service members, they made sure they had their medical records. The information was completed correctly. The veteran, same thing. They had a DBQ. Boom, I can use that. I can rate it because that veteran was educated. It was times that veterans would use court cases in 38 CFRs. And I had to go look them up. Because the VA doesn't train you to memorize all these 38 CFRs. You can't. It's too many of them, right? But I look it up and I'm like, you know what? The veteran's right. I can do that. So there was some vets that did the work for me. They put the breadcrumbs in front of me and I just followed the path. So again, that's why I preach education, education, education. Okay? So the claim form is not that hard to fill out. They're asking you for your name, your address, your social security number. Did you serve in a combat zone? What you're claiming? Did you get treatment from somewhere? Uh, did you serve on another name? Are you at risk of being homeless? Are you claiming something under a PACT Act? That's it. Do you need somebody to fill that out for you? I don't think so. But what you need is that education 
peace because you're the one who has to go to that exam. But I just want to share with you some things that I would look at or things that I would look at as a former VA rater or when I actually rated. OK. And again, there was some instances where veterans, they did my work for me. They made my job easy. Now, there were some vets that they went to release of information office. They had 5,000 pieces of progress notes stuffed in a, uh, a box and sent it to the VA. And now I'm sitting there with two picks on my eyelids because I'm scrolling. I got to go through all that stuff. And it takes time. OK, so with that being said, make sure you like, subscribe, hit that notification button and don't forget to share this video with your fellow veterans. Thank you.